sign's not on. <laughs> there we go. Hey everybody, welcome to Journey Kids. My name is Nate and I am so excited that you are here today for another great episode of Journey Kids Online. Before we get started, I actually want to play a game, so let's hop into that now. <laughs> Our game today is really, really awesome. It is called Win or Wham. That means fail, all right? So, so it is basically a bunch of videos that may or may not fail, all right? And we're gonna pause them right at that very second, right before the big fun action happens, all right? So what's gonna happen is you're gonna see a video and it's gonna stop right there, and then you're gonna say win or wham. Now, if you say win, that means they completed the task they were going for. If you say wham, that means they failed. Wah. All right, so we're gonna play a couple rounds, so let's hop into it. This is, is gonna be awesome. All right, I hope you've had fun so far. Uh, I cannot wait for the last few rounds, but don't forget there are a few more rounds online today. I want you to check them out right now at our Facebook or our YouTube channel. Today they're live. There's even more hysterical videos going on, so check them out. And don't forget to follow and subscribe. Man, that was killer. I hope you check out the other ones online. Before we hop back into our lesson, I actually want to remind you of something, that our game sometimes makes sense to our lesson. And today's lesson is really cool because it's actually Jesus proving that he can accomplish what he said he can accomplish. He can rescue us, all right? So just like our win or wham, we're gonna see if Jesus can win or wham today. So let's hop back into our story. What a great game, I hope you enjoyed playing it. You know, that game is actually a little bit of like our story today, because we're actually gonna see the power that Jesus has to be God. To be God is something crazy, right? It's one thing to say it, in fact, you could even say it, I am God, you know, I'm king. But that doesn't mean you are God, and that doesn't mean you are king. Well, the coolest thing about Jesus is he came, he saw, and then he showed off who he is. And today's story is none other than as he sees us, as he conquers the storm, all right? As he conquers the storm, all of his disciples are in the same spot. Before we hop into that, we're starting a brand new big picture question, all right? So our big picture question so far uh, for the last few weeks has been, what did Jesus teach about why he was here on earth? And the two answers are, right, Jesus taught about God and his kingdom, and he taught that all scripture pointed to him, meaning Jesus. All right, so our next big picture question is, why did Jesus do miracles? Why did Jesus do miracles? And I think this is a really great study. So let's hop into the video. Jesus spent all day teaching crowds of people near the Sea of Galilee. That evening, Jesus wanted to cross over to the other side of the sea. So Jesus and his disciples left the crowds. They got into a boat and began sailing. Some of the people from the crowds followed in their own boats. While Jesus and his disciples traveled, Jesus fell asleep on a cushion at the back of the boat. All of a sudden, a storm came. The wind was strong and the waves crashed into the boat. Water was coming into the boat and the disciples were afraid. Many of the disciples were fishermen, 
They had survived storms on the sea before, but this storm was different. It was so strong. If the water kept coming in the boat, the boat would sink. Surely they would all drown. The disciples looked to Jesus for help, but Jesus was still fast asleep at the back of the boat. He didn't seem to even notice the storm. Did Jesus care if they were about to sink into the sea? The disciples woke up Jesus. Lord, save us, they said. We are going to die. Jesus opened his eyes and saw that his friends were afraid. He got up and spoke to the wind. Then Jesus said to the sea, Silence! Be still. At the sound of Jesus' voice, the wind stopped blowing and the waves stopped crashing. Everything was calm. The disciples were safe. Jesus looked at his disciples and asked, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Did the disciples not trust Jesus to take care of them? The disciples were amazed. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Jesus' disciples knew Jesus was a good man and a good teacher. But when Jesus calmed the wind and the waves, he showed his disciples that he is also God. God rules the sea and stills its waves. What a cool story. I hope that you saw through how amazing it was that Jesus just spoke and everything stopped. So it kind of comes back to our big picture question. Why did Jesus perform miracles? Well, Jesus performed miracles to glorify God, to prove that he is the son of God, and to care for people. In fact, that's the whole reason why he came. So, so basically, he performed miracles to complete why he came to earth. To show how amazing God is, to fulfill that he is God's son, and to help care for people. To help care for people. In fact, he has the same ideas for us. And, well, actually, this is actually one of the neatest stories. And on our experiment time, I'm actually going to show you something really, really cool. Uh, but before we get it, you actually need a Bible for our experiment time. So I need you to go get your Bible. And well, while you're doing that, I actually want to show you a few copies of mine. So go get your Bible uh, and come back. And we're going to look at some chapters in it through our experiment time. So, so you got a few seconds. Ready, set, go. All right. I mean, your Bible could look like this. It could look like this. Oh, this. This it could look like this, this it could look like this, you know, hey, not even colored in, right? It could even look like this. As long as you have it and as long as you're ready, let's hop into it. So let's go into experiment time. Alright, I hope you found your Bible by now. Uh, this is one of my Bibles that I carry around with me all the time. Uh, and it's really cool. In fact, it has a lot of things. Now, you may not have ever read your Bible or maybe opened it up all the way, and that's okay. Uh, but this is such an important book. In fact, it's full of many books and many stories. Many of them have to do with Jesus. Uh, and, and as we learned in our big picture question, all scripture, that's another word for Bible, all right? All scripture points to Jesus, talks about him, all right? But there are four books that are really specific that talk about Jesus' life and talk about what he did here on earth, and they're called the Gospels, all right? And they're called Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How many of you have ever heard about those before? All right, cool. Well, some of their stories are similar, but you know, just like your parents might repeat something that's very, very, very important. Maybe right now you're thinking about something. Maybe it's like, don't play in the house with a ball, or maybe it's don't try to ride the dog like a horse. I don't know what it is, uh, uh, but whatever it is, when you repeat something, you're showing that it's really, really important. Well, our story today is actually found in not only one book, not only two books, but three books. This is found in three books, and I want you to find it. The first one is in the book of Matthew. Now, the easiest way to find it is actually looking in what we call the table of contents. The table of contents is right on the front, it's after maybe a few pages. But what it does is it has a list of all the books. Can you see that? It has a list of all the books, and, it, and more importantly, it has a list of where they're found, all the pages. So this helps us out. So what we're looking for is we're going in the New Testament, and we're looking for ooh, looking for Matthew, which is all the way over there, Matthew. And we're going to find it. But you know what? The other two books are actually right next to it. So Mark and Luke 
are also where it's found. Now, when you find these, I want you to look up some certain big numbers. Now, one big number is what we call the chapter number, and it's the first number. The second number is called the verse number, or the little number, all right? So the big number is our chapter number. So our first story, and since you already know this story, this is gonna be easy, is found in the book of Matthew, chapter eight. Book of Matthew, chapter eight. So I'm gonna give you a few seconds to find it. And mom and dad, don't worry if you wanna pause the video to find this, it's okay. You know what, I think it's really important no matter how long it takes to find, that you find it together. But is the book of Matthew, chapter eight, that's that big number eight. Can you see that big number eight there? It's right there, ooh, perfect. Big number eight, right there. And what, and what we're actually gonna, ooh, this is gonna get really small. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna look for the little numbers. Ooh, ooh. Ah, can you do it? Ah, come on. All right, I don't know if you can see it, but there are little tiny itty bitty numbers there. Those little numbers are called verse numbers, all right? And so the first verse we're gonna look up together is in chapter eight, so that means under eight, but before the big nine, and it's gonna be the number 23. Right above mine, it says, Jesus calms a storm. All right, I'm gonna read this chapter to you, but then I'm gonna give you the other two to see if you can find them, all right? It says, and when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great storm on the sea. So that boat was swamped by the waves, and he was asleep, that's Jesus. And they went to him, and they woke him, and saying, save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds. I mean, he's, that means he said, stop it. And the seas, and they, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled and saying, what sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? Now, do you remember that story? I mean, you just heard all the words, but we saw that video just a few minutes ago. Well, the coolest part is our stories actually come from here and then they make a drawing to make it look like that. All right, I'm gonna put the next two verses right below so you can have it. So if you wanna pause it, it's okay. All right, so check out this, but it is in it is in the book of Mark chapter four, and I'll put the verse right below. It is in the next book, Luke chapter eight. And I want you to read it, and I want you to discover what are the same things and what are the differences, all right? In fact, one really cool thing is what they call Jesus when they wake him up, all right? So in the one we just read, they called him Lord. Well, there are two other things they call him. So I want you to call or tell me or even comment below what they call Jesus when they wake him up, all right? So do the challenge and let's see what you got. So feel free to pause right now. Did you pause it? I mean, you can do it like right now. Well, all right, if you haven't done it yet, you can do it right now. All right, if you haven't paused it by now, it's okay. All right, you can keep rolling, but let's hop back into our story and let's check out what's going on. All right, I hope you take that challenge and discover more and more of what's in the Bible. Because I think when we discover what's in the Bible, we discover more about God. I also hope that you see in our story that it's not just about the disciples' faith and, and the disciples' choices, but frankly, it's about who Jesus is and why he even came to earth. Like our big picture question shares with us that he came to care for people care for people through our storms, all right? So our storms don't necessarily have to just be winds and waves. See, the disciples were definitely stuck in the boat, but it wasn't the storm that was bothering you, it was what? The danger that might come along. And in fact, these were grown men, they weren't children, they weren't just scared of thunder. In fact, many of them were uh, uh, experienced fishermen. So this storm probably was pretty powerful. And yet Jesus is way more powerful. In fact, he wakes up from a nap and stops it. You know, the same thing happens to us. We sometimes don't think that God can take care of our problems because they just feel so big. Well, I can't stop a storm. I can't, I can't make the wind stop and the rain stop and the wave stop. But Jesus can, he proved it in our story and he can in our lives. When we feel scared, when we feel out of place, he can take care of us. Today, our question, really hits home like this. So let's check it out. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Charlie from Albany, Georgia asks, Why do we have bad days? 
Oh, Charlie, we all have bad days. Uh, that is the reality of life. This is a great question that I think is, is really gonna be helpful for a lot of people. So the short answer is this, we have bad days because we live in a fallen world. Um, God's design was for there to be no bad days. If you think back in creation, Genesis 1 and 2, uh, there were no bad days that were orchestrated for Adam and Eve. If you think about what awaits us in eternity, Revelation 21 and 22, there are no bad days there either. It's, it's all in between because of sin that we have bad days. And it's, it's this way. So, Sometimes I have a bad day because I'm just not walking with Christ and, and I'm sinning and that's gonna be a problem, right? And I'm gonna have a hard, difficult, bad day because of my own sin. There are other days that I might be having a bad day because of the sin of others. Uh, maybe somebody's wronged me and that's hard, um, hurt my heart. Um, and so it's hard to have those kind of days. Other days, it's just the situation in life. Uh, I'm gonna be sitting in a lot of traffic. That's a bad day. It's not because of maybe sin directly, it's just the reality of, of life. And so all these things can happen and, and give us hard, difficult days. But here is what we have to remember, that, that these days are temporary. God has given us this great gift called sleep, hasn't he? Think about it, you have a really hard day and then you're able to go to bed at night and it may be hard to fall asleep because those things are still replaying, but eventually you drift off to sleep. And what happens? You wake up the next day and it's a new day. It's a gift from God, it's a fresh start. You can put that bad day to end. You can put it to bed. You wake up then and you have a brand new day and say, today's gonna be different. And God can bless you and you can have the, the greatest day ever right after having that bad day. So we remember that it's temporary, but also remember that even if that bad day uh, is, feels long, even if you wake up the next day and you have another bad day, here's the, the reality, here's the beautiful truth. God is with you. He's right there with you. Uh, you can turn to him, you can sigh to God and say, this is hard. And you know that God knows this because Jesus experienced bad days as well in his ministry on earth. So we have a God who loves us, we have a God who cares, a God who knows that we can go to for encouragement. We also have one another. Uh, when you're having a bad day, God has given us this gift in one another that you can go to parents or a friend or a teacher and just share and, and, and be encouraged by one another and, and be encouraged to, to hang in there, to get through it as God is with you. We have one another to love us through it as well. So here's a question for you. How can you encourage someone who is having a bad day? You know, it's sometimes hard when the bad days come to remember that truth, that God is in charge. And that whether it be the cause, whether it be just the way life is, the way Pastor Brian shared, doesn't mean that God doesn't love us anymore and that he's not for us anymore. He sent His only Son so that we might have life, that we might grow, and that we might be saved. I hope you know that, that no matter what you've done, no matter where you are, no matter how life is going, that Jesus wants you. Jesus wants you to be a part of His family. No matter how many bad days come along, He can rescue it. He has the power. Today, I want you to know that you can talk to Jesus at any time. Just like the disciples called to Jesus, even though He was physically there, Jesus is everywhere and he can help us today. I actually wanna pray for you, and I wanna pray for maybe the bad days coming along, but I want you to remember that whenever you need God, all you do is pray. Just close your eyes and say, God, help me. You don't have to have any more words than that, because that's all the disciples did, and did it work? Absolutely. So let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you for my boys and girls. I pray that whoever is having a bad day today, or whoever remembers having a bad day, I pray that you show them how much you love them throughout the entire thing. That they remember that you never, ever want them to harm. You want them to have good in their life. I thank you for each and every one of them. I cannot wait to see them very, very soon. In Jesus' name, amen. I cannot wait to see you guys very, very soon. And until then, have a great day. Bye.